welcome to our service today. Today we reflect on what we consider to be important in life, acquiring physical possessions for our enjoyment and security, or working for spiritual maturity that enriches our lives here and prepares us for God's presence. Whether we have a long or short time in our earthly lives, true reward can be found by living in Christ with love, generosity and joy. We continue as we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peter is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life has been demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Okay. It is not pointless to enjoy lovely things and good memories. But things and people, decrees Ecclesiastes, are ephemeral, here today and gone tomorrow. Generations of the foolish and the wives come and go, weary as on a treadmill with nothing new under the sun, and everyone striving to catch and indeed own the wind. He, he bemoans the fact that he'll leave everything to his heirs who, whether foolish or smart, will benefit from his wisdom. Such avarice, in a sense, and egoism is doomed to dust. For if we lack generous love for others, if we refuse to show kindness as big and small, because we may not receive them back in exact measure, if we expect justice and mercy for ourselves, but refuse it to or for others, we lack worth. Of course others gain from our knowledge and our taxes, just as we gain and have gained from that of others. To want all for ourselves, to want control over past, present and future, is to court despair, Ecclesiastes' problem. Jesus uses this parable not to threaten the farmer, nor to object to his planning for the future, but to point to the ways of justice and love which exclude hoarding wealth and skills. Jesus objects to the hoarding of wealth, and in particular, its idolizing. He neither hates the rich nor romanticizes poverty, but expects us all to act generously towards God and thus our neighbor and ourselves. Poverty does not automatically create virtue, that being based on kindness and mercy by each, rich and poor, to each. Yet nor is wealth a vice. 
meanness and callous indifference can be practiced by rich and poor alike. The successful farmer's life is cut short less because he plans than because he presumes to know the future and, more significantly, because he hoards food. He holds on to his wealth. And, asks Jesus, responding to the initial request that he arbitrate over an, in, uh, over an inheritance dispute, who will his wealth go to? Jesus shows the way forward, God giving even his life for all, as Paul has been showing us in our recent epistle readings from Colossians. That is the point of Ecclesiastes, and that the point of the Gospel parable, that, be, that we be renewed in knowledge according to the image of our Creator, without division or disdain. That means recognising and acting on the fact that Christ is all and in all, including ourselves. To that end, the Quaker William Penn's advice is helpful. When you have time amid the busyness of life, step aside yourself and be with the Christ within. Amen. Deborah is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. The response to the Lord is our shepherd, is we shall not want. All things come for you, O Lord, and we thank you for the generosity of your love. Help us to see the abundance of grace that is all around us. Help us to enjoy the world with compassion and wonder. May your church be seen as a good steward of your creation using its resources for the benefit of others and to your glory. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. 
We pray for the world's economy, for fair management and distribution of resources, for fair trade and just wages, for greater awareness and concern about injustice, for a commitment to our responsibilities as a planet sharers and earth dwellers. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. We pray and thank you for all parents with young children, asking you to bless and guide them. We pray for families in debt or other difficulties and for all those who feel anxious about the future. We pray also for those who enjoy financial security, that they may live with gratitude and generosity. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. We pray for those who are sick or dying. May they know your presence and your peace. We pray also for those who have died. Grant them your mercy and the everlasting joy of heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. God has called us to live in peace, and the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for our service today. There will be another online service next week for those who cannot join us in per for worship in person at our 10 a.m. communion service at All Saints Church, Spellsbury. Details of how to join our online and in-person services are on the bulletin and our website. And don't forget, all of our churches are open each day for personal prayer and quiet reflection. And so our service ends now with a blessing. God, the gracious giver of all gifts, guide you into the ways of goodness and generosity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.